Hello and welcome back. So in this video I'm going to show you how I fully assembled from beginning to end my Woodland Mills HM130 bandsaw mill. I haven't seen any other videos on YouTube. Um, there may be some but I um, haven't seen any videos on the complete process of building uh, this mill. And when I was shopping for this mill I actually was looking for a video that showed this exact process so I could get an idea of um, kind of all the gotchas and that sort of thing and how easy the process was but um, there wasn't a whole lot of detailed videos out there so figured I would make one myself so as you can see I start off by leveling the blocks um, and I just use cinder blocks to start with until I can mill some oak bunks that I plan on using after the fact to better level the mill. So to get started I got some cinder blocks, laid them out and make sure all the cinder blocks are level. Then I put the steel rails up on the blocks and throughout the process I, I keep my level by nearby just to make sure everything's level or close to level so I'm not getting anything way off. So here I'm putting the center bunk in and on the center bunk there's actually four bolts on either side and a metal plate that goes in there to hold um, the two rail sections together. So as you can see here I then got all the other bunks in place. Each of those just have two bolts on either side. Uh, it's just the middle one that has four bolts on either side. And uh, you can see also I, I lost the video on it but I put the leveling feet on and you can see those sitting on top of the uh, wooden 2x4s there. I didn't at this point completely get everything leveled out perfect because I know in the end I'm gonna have to fine-tune it so I got it close and then here I am just tightening up all the bunks which also holds the whole frame square. So you'll see once I get all the bunks tight I take out a big uh, framing square and uh, make sure all the bunks are square with the uh, frame rails. And so what I'm doing here is just with the hammer, I'm just hammering on the rails to bring the rails kind of more parallel with each other. Um, so I can make sure everything is nice and square. And once everything's squared up, then I go back around and I fully, completely tighten everything. If you're going through this process yourself, um, one thing you don't need to do is tighten everything 100% right away. You'll, you'll find that if you do, you're going to have to go back and loosen things up in order to get things square again. So you're better off just leaving everything a little bit loose until you're ready for that final step of getting everything perfectly squared up. And even then still, you'll still probably find that you'll later have to do it again. The power head for this saw weighs about 900 pounds, so once you get it up on these rails, it's gonna shift things off a little bit. So here I am just kinda hammering the bunks into place underneath the leveling feet and then going around after that and leveling things as best I can. So I got everything pretty well level once I got all this whole rail system set. You can see I'm wearing a head net on my head. Uh, being out in the woods there's a lot of bugs and when I built this it was uh, probably the peak of black fly and mosquito season so so here I am assembling the power head uh, the power head comes partially assembled out of the crate and you can see the green metal crate in the lower right hand corner of the screen that it comes in so you just dismount it from that crate lay it down for flat on its face and then follow through with the assembly from there and you can see here I'm putting on the base which has the four rollers on it that ride on those rails on the track so 
So there's two bolts that hold it to the initial part of the frame. And then there's, um, this is actually a four post frame total. You'll see the other two posts come in later. Um, and there'll be two more bolts um, that are gonna go into those posts as well. So here I am just grabbing the second side base with the other two rollers and the rollers go on the inside not the outside so I was trying to be careful as I went along to make sure that I get everything lined up and I have the right parts in the right place uh, the last thing I want to have to do is have to <laughs> take anything apart and redo it. So like I said before, you don't really want to fully, completely tighten everything as you're putting it together until you're 100% sure that you've gotten everything in place and everything is the way you want it. So I did actually, in this case, um, when I was building it, I tightened these up and then later had to loosen them again to get everything to line up properly when I was finishing building the frame. So what I'm doing here is I'm just actually taking some scrap uh, pieces of uh, leftover okay, so pressure feed wood sitting around and just kind of making some rails right to get that get the power head stood up on so I can finish assembling it. And it was actually a lot easier to tip up than I thought it was going to be. So here I finish assembling by putting the two back posts on. And for these posts, it actually does matter which one goes on which side. You'll notice there's some extra holes at the top, which holds uh, some of the um, accessories as, that are on par power head. The um, specifically the log scale that gives you your cut cut width. So you'll see here I realized before I put everything together that I put that one on the wrong side. And again, go here, just throwing a couple of bolts in either side and tightening those up. And I believe here it does tell you in the manual not to put both bolts in either side because you're going to need to move them around after. Luckily I had some helpers around. Yes. So it does say in the manual it's actually helpful to have other people around and give you a hand with things. Um, when it comes to having somebody else with some muscle around it's definitely a really big help. Uh, I didn't have that when I was putting this together so um, I came with, with uh, some more interesting ways to 
muscle things around, but having my kids around was actually quite helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, having the kids around to hand me nuts and bolts and stuff, and uh, actually, especially that top support, that black section there with the uh, loops on the top, that was interesting getting that up there. I had to hold it up in place while putting some of the bolts in, and that was where it was actually really handy to have my uh, my 13-year-old son around. Uh, he slid the bolts in while I held it in place. That was uh, one one part that was really handy to have an extra set of hands there. But for the most part, pretty much can be built by one person, with the exception of that top piece and the bolts. If you can come up with an interesting, uh, creative way to hold that up there while you're getting the bolts in, that's not so bad. And then the next part is the weight of the mill. Ideally having a tractor or something like that to lift it up would be best, but I had another idea. So as you're watching this video, if you find it interesting, if it's helping you learn anything, uh, if it's helped you in any way or you just found it interesting or fun to watch uh, Please consider liking the video and subscribing to our channel. We put out videos as often as we can The last couple of weeks it's been a bit slow We've had a failed septic system here and I've been dealing with that But hopefully in the next uh, few weeks I'll be able to ramp back up and get some more videos done I'm gonna be doing a lot of milling on my uh, mill and gonna be getting back into the shop doing some woodworking uh, some chainsaw maintenance and uh, all sorts of uh, projects related so anyway if you're interested hit the subscribe button in the video on the channel uh, hit that bell icon check the box and you'll know about all the future videos that I have come out and I hope you find those interesting I appreciate you watching and if you have any comments or suggestions questions concerns please throw those down in the comments below and uh, let me know what you think. And usually the most helpful out of the bunch is my six-year-old daughter, Emma. Also the most fun to work with. So what I'm doing here is I put those pieces of wood down in front of the saw head because uh, what I plan on doing is shimming it and rolling it over to the frame, to the uh, rails, so I can get it in position to get it up onto those rails. And I found it easier to take the uh, lubrication tank off in order to do this to get it kind of out of my face. So if this, if this is something you're going to do by yourself and have to shimmy it the way I am, uh, you're probably better off not putting that tank on until after. <laughs> this is where I had to start getting creative because I don't have a tractor here or any heavy machinery. so. I had to come up with some other ideas. And here's where I get more creative.
All right, here we go. So I didn't record, um, apparently, because my camera was off and I didn't know it, but I didn't record how I got the mill to this point. What I did, as you can see that purple strap up on the top up there, I tied that to the frame of the mill and had my winch on my trailer. And you can see the winch line going under that log. I'm using a chain over there on the log. It's kind of like a fulcrum or pulley or whatever, but then I ran that to there so I could tip it back. And then I pulled it forward from underneath by hand. And as I pulled it forward underneath, it tipped back further, putting those feet up high enough for me to rest them onto the rails. Now they're sitting on the rails. I'm just gonna get up behind it and push it on. Hopefully, because this thing is heavy. So here I'm running the winch cable underneath the mill, underneath the first couple bunks, or the first few bunks. and then up and around the bar that holds the log clamp. And so I'm kind of using that as uh, like a pulley. So I wrap the cable around. Then hooking it up to the purple strap on the top, part of the frame. So hopefully when we pull on the winch, it will pull the power head up on to the rails with a little bit of guidance uh, by me while I have somebody operating the winch for me. In case you're wondering, a little more. That's my 6-year-old daughter running the winch for me. She's actually very good at it. Follows instructions very well. <laughs> and as you can tell, the saw head's not light. <laughs> little more. 
the winch certainly made uh, a big difference getting this up on here. <laughs> you can also see that the track moved when we were doing this, so I had to kind of realign things and re-level things, but in the end I got the, the power head up there, and uh, that was my biggest challenge, which actually didn't go too terribly bad. I don't know if I would recommend this process to anyone else, but um, I felt pretty confident that I wasn't going to have any problems getting it done. So I just have to say that if it weren't for this winch and trailer and truck set up here and most importantly who controlled the winch for me and followed my every direction my six-year-old daughter Emma and her 8,000 pound winch helped me pull that power head up onto the saw right Em? I think I owe you a pretty big reward today don't I? Awesome job love you What I'm doing here is getting all of the cables hooked up, which lifts the power head up. So I, I wanted to, I got this saw up onto the mill, onto the track first before doing a lot of these uh, the, these last parts here because I figured it would be a lot easier to do once I got it up there. I wouldn't have all these extra parts and cables and things in my way when I was trying to move that up onto the track and it was definitely a good idea. As you can see, getting that up there was not an easy task and having all these extra parts and weight would have just made it a lot more complicated. So here I'm getting the handle up there. And you can see those cables there that go up and over those attached to that crank and when you turn that it lifts the uh, power head up and down. And here I am hooking up the lubrication lines where the soapy water runs through to lubricate the blade. Just the last few steps here before uh, before it's complete. This is the log scale. Twenty-five feet grab. The log scale. Yeah, it says twenty-five feet grab. Twenty-five pounds of pork has to be done. So I'm greasing up some of the moving parts to kind of keep them lubricated well and freely moving. I got the blade on, or the blade was already on, so I was just setting the tension and. And here you can see what I have is a two-ton jack, hydraulic jack. I'm jacking up the 
rail so I can straighten it out again after I messed it up with the winch when I was pulling the saw head up on there. But still, I consider it worth it. It was really the only way I had of getting it up there without borrowing a tractor from a friend, which would have taken me probably another week or so to get. And it was just, uh, I figured I would give it a shot and see what I could do and got it up there. So with a little bit extra time leveling things out and lining things back up, we'll be in good shape. And of course the kids love playing with the bubble wrap. So here is us running the first few cuts on the new mill. As you can see it's easy enough even my kids can operate it. And just for the first couple cuts, yeah they, they didn't have a hearing protection on but if they are near the sawmill for anything more than a, a minute or two they they are wearing it but you can see how really easy it is to move and there's my eight-year-old son moving it I noticed some tiny little sparks and what I learned was those tiny little sparks were the metal blade coming in contact high speed with uh, dirt inside the bark of the wood and now I pressure wash every log nice and thoroughly before I make any cut into that log and that has made a huge difference on the life of the blade so I figured I'd just share that tip with you and as you can see here, I actually borrowed a friend's tractor to uh, mill the first couple of larger logs. And I have come up with another solution for getting the logs up onto the mill. And I will share that with you in a later video. I also have a couple other videos on my channel where I share some other tips and things that I've uh, come up with along the way in my experience uh, initially starting out with my mill. And I will be posting up more of those as I learn more and as I get into some more interesting wood. So if you like this video, found it interesting, entertaining, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, if you did like it, hit that like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. Let me know either way. Like I said, down in the comments below what you liked or just didn't, didn't like about it. If you have any tips, tricks, uh, let me know if you learned anything from this. I'd really appreciate it. And I do respond to all the comments that I get on my videos. Um, also, if you want to see more videos of some more milling that I'm going to be doing on my mill and other projects and things like that as time goes, please hit that subscribe button. And when you hit that, you'll notice there's a bell icon. Hit that bell icon, check the box, and you'll be notified of all the future videos that I release. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.